Hello, my name is Robin Clark. My friends call me Charlie. And I'm going to do a series of videos on subject matters that are that basically we need to talk about. Some of them are going to be uncomfortable. And the first topic that I'm going to cover is childless by choice people. Now, this isn't people that cannot have children. Two totally different subjects. Um, those that have to uh, go through infertility, decide to adopt or need a surrogate. This is about people that decide not to have children. Now, I'm an infertility patient four years with my son and three years with my daughter. So I definitely decided to have children. But for those of you that are childless by choice, you decided to make this time around all about you, to be completely selfish, no responsibility to any little human and their growth into adulthood, but only about you. Um, but what's funny is that if you ask parents that their children are finally grown and out of the house and successful and doing their own thing, and you ask them next time around, they're going to tell you, no, 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 no. Next time around, I get it. I'm going to be childless by choice and it's going to be all about me. So we understand. We, we do. Now this uh, uh, next part might sound a little harsh and I intended to be. And that is because you are childless by choice, you have absolutely no advice to give any other parent on how to raise their children. And you need to understand that. Now, I respect the fact that the childless by choice people ran to the doctor as soon as they could to have their parts nipped and tucked and or actually tied and burnt and taken out. So you would never have a child. You could not even possibly accidentally have a child. Trust me, I respect you. And I think that's fantastic. There are people on this planet that shouldn't have children because they don't want children. But the advice you really need to hear and that your friends won't tell you is that they cringe every time you open your mouth and give off preposterous advice on how to raise children. Now we've heard, oh, I know because you came from a very large family and you had to raise, you know, maybe some of your brothers and sisters or you had a daycare or you or you babysat, you know, your nieces and your nephews. Um, and it's not the same. It's not the same. And we've also heard you say things like, you need, you, to, you need to spank them. You need to get this behavior under control right now. And I guarantee you, if you let them know who the boss is right now, um, it's going to set up the rest of your life to be a lot easier. So you're telling me if we spank our children, put them in timeout right from the get-go, the next, teen, next 18 years is going to be a bowl of champagne and cherries with no worries whatsoever, nope, that's not going to happen. That's not how it works. To give you an example on the difference between just spanking them and, and putting them in time out as soon as that time comes, um, this scenario happened to me uh, when my son was three, and I, I, I still giggle about it. My girlfriend came over to have uh, just uh, some girl time, a cup of tea, and, and talk, and vent, and all that kind of good stuff. And my three-year-old decided to throw this big temper tantrum on the floor and just be this little pissy monster. And um, I ignored him. And my girlfriend was she couldn't handle it. She was sitting there, and she's like, are you going to do something about that? And I'm like, what? And she says, Th this behavior. And I said, no. And she says, well, why not? You need to teach him a lesson right now. Teach him some respect. And I said, he's three. She goes, I don't care. You need to nip it in the bud right now so this behavior stops. And I said, listen, <laughs> he's three years old. Right now, he's challenging me. He's trying to figure out what he can do to get my attention and however he needs to get it to get exactly what he wants. And uh, 
no, I'm just going to ignore him. She's like, well, I just don't understand this. And I said, just, just watch, just sit and watch for a while. And, and it'll, it'll all wash out. You'll understand. You'll understand in just a minute. And she's just watching him and I'm going about my business with the teacups and everything. And finally, after about 15 minutes, he stops his little monster behavior and stands up, walks around a little bit, and then finally comes into me and he says, Mom, and then he asks me politely and nicely for whatever it was that he wanted in the first place. And so I gave it to him, kissed him on the top of the head, and he walks off with a smile. And I looked at my girlfriend and I said, now, what did he just learn? And she kind of looked at me and I said, exactly. He learned that that little pissy monster behavior is getting him nowhere. But if he comes up to me and he asks me politely, pretty much he's going to get just about anything. Right? Now, trust me, uh, we parents have tried every trick in the book and we still have gray hair and we are learning every day. So just keep your advice to yourself, please, for the sake of our friendship. And please don't talk about our friends as children and how badly they are at parenting. Uh, because we, as parents, are all in the same boat together. We're all trying to figure it out together. And you're really not in that boat. Um, you're pretty much clueless. And the definition of clueless is having no knowledge or understanding or ability to understand what you're talking about. And that this is one of those subjects. You can't give us advice because you have no clue. And one last thing. We parents do not appreciate the negative comments that you make about our children. Now, we as parents can say anything we want about our children. We can. We just, you know, sometimes we just had it and we call them names we shouldn't call and we tell you that we want to put them in a box and bury them in the backyard and uh you know take them out in a week after they fermented a little bit it's just we go through a lot with them but you cannot say anything you're the friend you're supposed to sit there listen to us vent and feed us wine as we're doing it that's your job To get you to understand this a little bit better, if we told you how we felt about your husband, not that we feel this way, but if we were to say he's a brat, he's manipulative, he's ridiculous, he's mean, he's cruel, um, uh, he's an idiot, um, you would go off the freaking deep end if we did that, if we said that to you. And it's the same feeling that we get when you talk to, about our children. So, if you, you so we, we need you to understand this. Now, some of you might be saying, oh, I do know. And who do you think you are, Robin, to talk to us like this or this little video that you're putting out? Okay, I get it. Like I said, it was, um, I intended this to be an uncomfortable video. Because I want you to think about the next time that you're with your friends, with children, what they're actually thinking when you're actually giving them this ridiculous, preposterous advice. So if you don't want your friendships to dwindle down to childless by choice friends only, I'm just simply letting you know that your advice, keep it to yourself. Um, just keep it to yourself when it comes to our children, how you think about them or what titles that you want to put on them is just keep it to yourself. Isn't that what friends are for? No disrespect intended. Just saying, just something to talk about. Charlie out.